Hi, it's Will. We're going to finish up the GUI for our volume plugin using the ASPIC plugin framework. And I've got the volume plugin loaded into Logic right here. This is where we left off in the last video. We had a blank 450 by 100 canvas area to work with. Now I'm going to go move this up to the corner and I'm going to right click and choose Open UI Description Editor to pull up the um, the ASPIC GUI designer. Remember that this is part of VST GUI 4. It is part of your plugin project and it is a fantastic and amazing tool that we are really, really, really lucky to be able to use in this. Uh, this is, is created and designed by the VST GUI 4 engineers and uh, it writes perfect XML code every single time. You can do 99.9% .9 of everything that you do with VST GUI 4 you can do inside of this GUI designer. The small amount of stuff that you can't do is stuff you have to write code for anyway and we're going to talk about that in some of the more advanced GUI design chapters or, or videos but um, you will be able to use this for everything else. It is absolutely fantastic. We've got our background set here and it's time for us to embed the background image. So here is my editor uh, view. You can see it says 450 by 100. And here in this uh, top pane is where you do all of your sort of low level operation on the objects you're looking at. In this case, it's this view container, which is this background. What I'm gonna do is in the bitmap um, combo, I am gonna pull up half space rack. Boom, it has now got the half space rack exactly fitted into it here. And uh, you hopefully this is not a, a problem with viewing uh, to look at. You can also zoom in. And so I can zoom in and make this thing really, really, really big. It will get a little bit ugly looking because the fonts will be a little bit blocky. But it is a good way to be able to zoom in and take a look at what we're doing in this video where the graphics may not be so easy to look at. So here is our background uh, image. We want this thing to match up with our original, um, our original idea. And the original idea for this was the GUI was going to look something like this. Volume, mute, channels, VU, and a logo. So right now we're going to work on this little cluster. It's going to be a volume label, a knob, and a text edit control. We're going to add that right now. So let me uh, shrink this, uh, let me put the view to this back to normal, zoom 100%, which is right here. And I'll zoom in and zoom out a little bit later in the video as well. We're gonna start off with the text label. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna come down here to where it says label, which is here. And the way that this works is you grab a row from this and you drag and drop it into the GUI. So I'm gonna drag this and drop it right up here into the GUI. It's a black box right now, but we're gonna fix that. The first thing is I'm gonna put the label volume in it here. And I am gonna pick the font, normal font smaller, which is right there. For the font color, I am gonna make the font color, which is right here, I'm gonna make this black and I'm gonna make the background color here white, which looks like that. And then I'm gonna check the transparent box and the transparent box will just hide the background. So here's the transparent box. There is my volume tag. I'm gonna resize it, maybe make it look like that. So the volume label is set up. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the volume knob underneath this. Let me zoom in in case you need to get a closer look here. The volume knob is a animation knob. So I'm gonna come down to the animation knob row here and I'm gonna drag this and drop it up in here. Now the only thing you gotta remember is there is no bitmap assigned yet. So we're not gonna see a knob until we, until we add that. But we will be able to see a rectangle of where the knob will be. So I'm gonna take this and drag it and you can see that I've now got this little rectangle highlighted here. The, the knobs that we're using all have the same dimensions. So the dimensions are done over here where it says size. Our size is gonna be 42 by 42. So that's 42 comma 42. And I'm gonna hit the tab button. And then I can take this and I can kind of move this around um, a little bit. My grid, let's make the grid five by five. Like that, and now it'll move around in clicks of five instead. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty centered underneath the volume here. 
It's 42 by 42, and for the bitmap, I'm going to choose the chicken head 2. Now, because our, our one knob is 42 by 42, that exactly fits inside this little arrangement here. It's a little bit blurry because we're zoomed in. That's okay. We'll zoom out in a minute. So there is my knob. I need to connect this to the tag or the control ID for that particular um, control. So I will do that in here. It says control tag and it is control ID colon colon volume DB. So I'm going to choose that and that is now going to connect up that to the parameter with the same number of zero, which is this guy right here. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a text edit control underneath here. And I'm going to, going to connect it also to the same control ID. So when you move the knob, the numbers will change here. This is a text edit control, which you find right here. I'm going to select the row and I'm going to drag and drop it right here. So there is my, uh, my text edit control. Now it's a little bit big. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it smaller like this. Bring this down in size. I'm going to resize it here like that. I'm going to take this text edit control and I am gonna, I'm going to give it a title right now, 1.23, just as a placeholder. The font I'm going to use is the normal font smaller, which is right here. I'm going to make the font color black and the background color here. I'm going to make it white for right now and I'm going to do the same thing by checking the transparent button here to make it transparent. So now here is my edit control and I am going to go to the control tag here and I'm going to set it to volume DB as well. So this control, this edit control is connected to the same variable as my volume knob is here. I can move the knob and change the value or I can type the value into this control when it's active on the graphic, uh, on the GUI rather. So right now, let me zoom it back out to 100% so we can see what this looks like. Here it is in the grand scheme of things, the label, the knob, and the edit control, which is right here. The next thing that I want to do is I want to add my mute control. Likewise, I'm going to go back to the text label, which I have right here. I'm going to drag up another text label here. It's going to be labeled mute. And I'm going to give it a normal font smaller. I'm going to make the font color black and the back color white. And I'm going to make the thing transparent again like that. This gives us our mute label. It's going to sit right there and it's going to go over top of a on off switch, which is going to sit below it. So the on off button is right here. I'm going to select this row and I'm going to drag the on off button to right here. Once again, I don't have a graphic yet, but I know that this button is going to be 42 by 42. So that's its size, which is right here. And I can grab the bitmap for it, which is medium toggle switch. And there is my toggle switch in the up position. So I am just dragging this and moving this to how I like it. That looks good. The next thing that we have is we have our channels. The channels uh, um, button, we're going to need a label for it. So I'm going to go back to the label here. I'm going to drag another one up right here. And I'm going to label this one channels. And I'm going to do the same little thing. I'm going to change the size. I'm going to change the color. I'm going to change the background color. And I'm going to make it transparent like that. So here is my channels label. And the switch we're going to use is called a segment control. So the segment control is right here. See segment button. It is a really cool uh, graphic, uh, graphic item because the stock version of it does not require any special graphics. You can add graphics to it and you can customize it, but the stock version doesn't need that. So I'm going to drag this and I'm going to place this right here. You can see it's, it's got four segments in it right now. Let's come up to the segment button, which is right here. The style is horizontal, which is correct. The segment names are going to be stereo, comma, left, comma, right. 
This is the same thing as we put in when we created the parameter way back in the, um, the aspect code creator. For the font, I'm going to use normal font smaller as well. So this is going to be kind of a shrunk down little control here. I'm going to squeeze it together to get the left and the right channels like that. Now, a segment control has a method for coloring these buttons. And the coloring for the buttons is done with what's called a gradient. Now, we don't have any gradients set up, but I'm going to go ahead and set up a couple of them just for fun. I'm going to call this um, gradient one grad one and double click on it here, say edit. And it's going to give me a gradient. Um, it's going to give me a, a sort of a color. These are called color stops right here. So I'm going to make this one kind of a light colored uh, gradient like that. And I'm going to add another gradient called gradient two. And I'm going to make this one a dark colored one. Now, these are really just going to wind up, sorry, make this a dark colored one like that. For my segment button up here, you can see that it will let me adjust the gradient. So the gradient here, I'm calling this gradient one, let's call that gradient two. And the highlighted is going to be gradient uh, number one. So that's going to look like this. Let me go back to gradient number two, which is right here. And I'm going to go edit it, and I'm going to make it a little bit lighter. I don't like how dark that is. OK, so here's what it looks like. You can see it's kind of got a three-dimensional, almost rounded sort of form right now. In fact, let me go make one more little adjustment here to gradient two, make it a little bit lighter. Say OK, and I'm going to go back to gradient one and make it super, super light like this. Say OK. So there is our um, our selector. Now, we still need to connect it up to the proper control ID. I'm not sure if I did that for the button. Let me check that. So um, note for the button here, the control tag is enable mute. So I'll do that here. And then for the channels, the control tag there is for channels, which is control ID colon colon and channels, which is right there. So we're getting close. We only need a VU meter at this point, and then we'll have a complete GUI. We'll come back and we'll add the logo at the very end. For the VU meter, I'm going to come back to the views here, go to VU meter and grab it and take it and drop it right here. For this VU meter, we know that the size is 15 by 65. So there is our little rectangle that's going to get filled. And I need to make a label for that. Well, let me go ahead and set up this VU meter. For the VU meter over here, the control tag is going to be the VU meter. And we're going to need two bitmaps. One of them is the off bitmap. So this is going to be VU off. The other one is the on bitmap, which is just called bitmap. And so that's VU on. So this is going to give us our off and our on uh, states for that. I need one more label, which is I need a, um, a VU label. I'm going to cut and paste it directly from the channels label there. This is another cool thing that you can do. So here is the channels label. I just, I just use control C and control V and just cut and pasted this to not have to do the drag and drop so much. So there is my little VU. Let me change this. Slide this over here, slide this over here. And once again, I'm going to double check to make sure my VU meter is connected correctly. And maybe I'll change the grid here to 2 and 2. That way I can tweak that over. OK, so there's my VU. And uh, in fact, let me take all of these labels and drag these up a little bit like this. Drag this up here. Everything's a little bit up now, and there's my VU meter. And boom, it's connected. And this guy has got his control tag connected to channels, which is right here. We're all connected up. So at this point, I am going to say save here. That saves the XML file. And then the close the editor, which is right here. Now, this is pretty interesting. The Now, my gradients didn't come out so hot here, but I'll go back and fix those in a minute. The, um, 
The GUI is here, and we haven't recompiled it, but it will still work with AU and, uh, and AAX. So there's my volume control. There's the mute. There's left and right. And you can see that my VU meter is also moving. Okay, now a couple of things to think about. First of all, we need to make an adjustment to our gradient here to make it not so obnoxious. The other thing is the VU meter, when we watched it, it didn't have an attack and release of 10 milliseconds and 500 milliseconds. In fact, it's really behaving like a peak meter and we're gonna take care of that issue as well. So let me open this up, open UI description editor back here. Let me take care of that gradient first. The gradient, which is called gradient one, which is this one, is real bright, which we see right there. So let, me, let me darken this one up a little bit. So we've got something that looks like that. Um, the, the segment button for the text color highlighted is white. Let me make the text color highlighted black so we get this back again like that. So that looks pretty good and the gradients are almost even right now. Let me edit this one out and make this one a little bit lighter of the gradient like that. Okay, so that's a pretty good that's a pretty good selection right there. For the VU meter, we need to get this uh, working properly. The VU meters use something called a custom view in ASPIC. And so for the VU meter here, the way we're gonna use the custom view is we're gonna scroll down to where it says custom view name and we're gonna set this to meter view, V-I-E-W, just like that. So meter view is the custom view. Go back here and I'm gonna say save and then close the editor. And now we've got our attack of 10 milliseconds and release of 500 milliseconds. This view meter, sorry, is behaving a lot better, a lot more like what we would expect. See the very, very slow release here. So there is stereo left and right, and there is our view meter operating. Let's do one more thing. Let's add our company logo. So I'm gonna go back to the editor and come up here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a template and the template that we're, we're oh, sorry. Actually, I wanna do this as a view container. So I've got a view container right here. I'm gonna drag and drop that view container up here to my editor. I'm going to change the size of the view container to 80 by 82. 80 by 82 exactly matches that graphic that I had. So I've got a, a empty view container here. I've got it sized to 80 by 82. And I'm going to pull up the Aspic logo for the bitmap. And so there is my company logo. At this point, I can say File Save, do Close Editor. And here is my completed GUI all designed inside of Logic Pro X. With everything working, including the logo. Now at this point, I need to rebuild this to get this GUI uh, loaded into the plugin. I'm gonna save the plugin here and I'm gonna close it and I'm gonna close Logic as well but I do need to come back to here and I do need to do another build in order to get that plugin in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and open Logic back up here. And we should see, there it is right there. So here is the plugin now with the GUI and this is now compiled in. So we can now move this AU plugin around however we want to. So we've done our complete GUI from the very beginning to the very end, which is right here, and we've got a AU plugin running. But now what we'd like to do is to take this AU plugin and convert it to AX and uh, VST as well. It's all part of a universal project, so I can do that too. I'm going to do that in the very next video, and we'll wrap up this universal plugin.